Amp-wise, what's shaking back there? Okay, uh, well, they're not all live. I don't want everything live. Sure. Um, I have a 412 live and a 1212 that are live. Okay. And then the others are backups. But um, so, what is a Supro? What uh, what Supro amp are you? This is this is where things get interesting. Bob. Okay. So, I've used tube amps, yeah. and I've used an Orange CS50 for a long time, yeah. and I've used uh, a Supro Statesman for a long time now. Yeah. They're great amps. Yeah. I still use them. Yeah. In this rig particularly, I decided to do something different, and that is, I went to the dark side. Oh, well, let's see, let's hear, let's dive in. <laughs> I don't know if it's exactly the dark <laughs> side, but by that I mean um, I ended up building a, a modeling rig. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Dirt, dirt, but even before the pandemic, when we would tour, I had these big head cases and a Bradshaw rig. It's the rig between the one that we talked about. Sure. And it was thousands of pounds yeah yeah and things have gotten more and more expensive to tour oh god yeah. weight is an issue and really originally i built this fly rig because uh, we would be like the gear would be moving and i'd have to go play a one-off and then fly back to the tour yeah. so i had to have something i could just take quickly with me and i used kind of a lot of stuff so i had to get tricky with it so i started using a uh, line six helix oh, okay oh and, great okay um i i got i used hey, there's four sins in there so i figured out how to use like the four pedals that are essential that this thing probably isn't going to do perfectly, but it does everything else pretty perfectly. And that's what I fly around with. Okay. Then we did tours where we went, actually, let's just take the fly rig on the whole tour. So I did that. Then I started to build a new rig and went, I think I'm going to just stay in this world because I really actually became close to how this sounded and I figured it out. I had the A rig and the fly rig on stage just like this at one yeah. point with the AB switch and I could go between them and hear like, okay, uh, I had my front of house out there telling me from, from the talk back, yeah. more mids, less low wind, go to the orange side. So I split this in half and one side is my orange side, one oh. side is my Supro side. I run them into respective cabinets. I run into, um, believe it or not, I run into a solid state power amp. Yeah. It's super efficient. It's super clean. It sounds great. Bulletproof. Yeah, that's great. I'm just man. saying, I know there's going to be a lot of haters. Technology is there. Yeah. If you're nerdy enough to know how to move the knobs around and you can make it work for you, the modeling tech now, and so many people are doing it with Axe FX. Oh, yeah. And uh, what's the other really big one? Yeah. The, the Kemper, of course. Yeah, the Kemper. Um, I, I'm using these guys because I've been friends with them for a long time. Sure. And well, and, and working in working with your front of house and having him a b it and so yeah we went back and forth until he couldn't tell yeah and then i would say which one do you like more <laughs> and it was this one huh. this one that actually be, it became the better sounding one do you feel okay the thing that gets me with with that is it doesn't quite feel it but i think it's probably because I'm usually on ears with direct things, but if we have cabinets behind it, probably feels makes a big difference. The yeah, same. It makes a big difference. Uh, knowing how to warm it up and use the right stuff with it, but the live speaker makes all the difference. Yeah, because yeah. your your guitar will react kind yeah. of the same way. Yeah, and I got out of ears. I was touring with in ears for a while, and it just for me. I don't know if it's because of the, the this rig or whatever. Just in general. Yeah. Ears for me freak me out. Yeah. A lot of guitar players are like that. A lot of my friends that do it. There's a few of us that just stay with monitoring. I feel weird in here. Yeah. When I can't hear people and oh, the bubble and, right. and and the air on stage. To me, it, it's when things go wrong thin. and it's buried in your ear, Ooh, it's a nightmare. Yeah. When things go wrong out here, it's manageable because I can just walk over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is the mothership. There's a lot going on here, but yeah. kind of bring us through Okay. Yeah. The it's easy. Basics. I'm going to do my best. This is the Helix. Okay. That's the brain. Yeah. And the cool thing about it is, I think I'm the first person to do it, according to uh, Bob Bradshaw. And, well, and he would know. He, I mean, <laughs> yeah. he would know. I mean, I know he's never done it. Yeah. Um, because I was working on it with him yeah. for the first time. But uh, Line 6 even, I don't think they've really done, had too much experience with it. So I was the guinea pig, and I was basically coming up with how to do this. This controls 
Bob's switching equipment. No. Oh. So, I mean, I have his switcher here, this, yeah. this RST. And that's the, that's the one you had from the rig prior to this? Yes. You just kind of cannibalized that rig. I rebuilt it and, and it kept here. the board. Okay. So that this is the RST. And normally this has like a row of presets and then pedals you can access and banks like that. Yeah. I personally liked how this thing, I became accustomed to how the Helix looks. Sure, it's clean. It's got all the strips. And if you look, like if I move through like like songs, you can see like- oh, yeah, Your set list. Yeah, yeah, my set list. <laughs> and then uh, besides the set list that I can see all the songs, I can now see all my settings. Oh, yeah. Like I don't have to remember, like this is where the presets were before, down here, right. and there's no strip. So sometimes the intro would be here and it would just go right into a, a solo. And then sometimes it'll go into the, like the verse and then a chorus, but sometimes there's a pre-chorus there. Sometimes <laughs> there's no solo here and it's over here. And I'm just having to remember all this. Yeah. I have something like 70 songs in these things. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, man. And, and you're playing. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> you had to play the whole time too. I don't too. remember all this, John. <laughs> yeah. So now when I have uh, the Helix, I can kind of look and see where everything is very quickly and cool. then it's all right there. 